Just like the street lights lit this town Like a fire in a blaze, gotta burn it down Can't be afraid to leave this out We got this far, don't know how cave in the rock I love this place there's people down there so we got to go down I go down to the water to get it. This is where the pirates, the Harp brothers, used to run people, used to put people on a horse and run them straight off the bluff right there. But I first saw, first found out about this in an old river map back in the 80s where, see if I can't find it, Corps of Engineers had a whole page about the history here about the pirates and always wanted to come here it took me years i'd been here like four or five times but the river was always up too high then one year i finally made it a lot of people died here a lot of people were murdered here so a lot of people beached their boats here That is a perfect beach right there. So uh, Disney made a movie here. There used to be a bar in here and The legend goes they put a couple topless women over there and as the flat boats were coming down they'd yell for help and get them to stop right there and then tell them to come to the tavern and this used to be a tavern and of course when the flat boats would land right here they'd never leave the tavern Nineteen ten.
So the Hart brothers would keep their treasure in here and they had a bar in here and they'd welcome you in, spend the night and you'd never leave. I don't think I've ever been here when it's this dry. Wow. So it's one of the first times I actually come in here where I brought a flashlight. Isn't this cool? All right, this is this section here at one time. There was a false wall here, right here, that went across. And this is where they used to hide all their treasure. bats on the wall. So cool. Hey, this is make a perfect bar right here. But yeah, the the when they had a, a bar in here, and Daniel Boone actually had to come down here and kill the Disney made a movie about it, but Daniel Boone actually came in here and killed some of the bandits. From the late 1700s to the 1870s, the area around Cave in the Rock was plagued with pirates, horse thieves, counterfeiters, and robbers. In 1790, counterfeiter Philip Aston and John Duff used the cave as their base camp. At the start of the Revolutionary War, Duff was living upriver a few miles at Battery Rock. Then, in 1797, Samuel Mason moved his base of operations from Diamond Island and Red Banks to the cave and made its home of the River Pirates. Uh, this area, Henderson, I think, was called Red Banks. Owensboro was known as uh, Yellow Banks.
Two of Mason's brothers had been business partners of Duff in Illinois, and in 1780, Mason created a combination tavern, gambling den, brothel, and criminal refuge. His men lured in gullible river travelers and then robbed and killed them. In 1799, Samuel Mason hung a sign over the cave's entrance saying, Wilson's Liquor Vault and House for Entertainment. Duff and his associates had been making salt in the area along the Saline River. A detachment from the U.S. Army garrison at Fort Massac, downriver from Cave in the Rock, captured him and three of his men. The soldiers took their prisoners by boat down the Saline River to the Ohio River. And on their way back to the fort, the soldiers stopped by the brothel at the cave. Duff and his men escaped and overpowered the soldiers as they returned from the brothel. They tied them up, put them in a boat, and pushed them out into the river to float downstream to the fort. Then in June of 1799, the commander of Fort Massac hired a French-Canadian and three Shawnee warriors to assassinate Duff which they did. The infamous Hart brothers also reached the cave region in the spring of 1799. They are associated with two separate stories at the cave and one of the infamous Pot Springs area to the north. The first story has them pushing a young couple off the top of the cliffs over the cave. They survived. The second was an act of piracy in which one of the men survived. Later, he was forced off the cliff as well, but this time they tied the man to a horse and neither survived. The Pot Spring story is recalled as a murder of two or three hunters. And this, the Hart mur murder site, within 20 years, will become the future location of the legendary Potts Inn which was presumed to be a human death trap for unsuspecting travelers along the Fords Ferry High Water Road. An early frontier highway who wanted to spend the night for food and lodging, never to leave the inn. Mason and Wilson's time at the cave may have come to an end during the summer of 1799 when they were attacked by a group of bounty hunters under the leadership of Captain Young, calling themselves the Exterminators. The Harps retreated back into Kentucky while Mason traveled downriver and began to focus on highway robbery along the Natchez Trace. The next generation of outlaws in the region sprang right. either from the Stuvart Gang, a group of counterfeiters, based at Stuvert Fort on top of the bluffs overlooking the Ohio River at what is now Rose Claire, Illinois. Or the Ford's ferry gang led ferry, by yeah. James Ford, based a few miles upriver from the cave at what became known as Ford's Ferry. Law enforcement officials led three separate ra raids against the fort in 1822 and 1823. Although it's not clear what happened following the raids, the gangs had disappeared from the area by 1830, and the Ford's Ferry Gang was broken up following the mysterious death of James Ford's two sons, followed by his own assassination in 1833. Even after the death of Ford, outlaws remained. Isham Potts operated Potts End on Ford's Ferry High Water Road, north of the cave. Travelers checked in, but seldom did they ever check out. The legend of Billy Potts, the returning son who had been murdered unknowingly by his father, likely took place in the months following Ford's assassination. This tragedy, tragic story of poetic justice has taken on folklorish proportions. Records show the elder Potts and his wife separated in 1834 and 1835. Eason Bigsby took up counterfeiting in Hardin County in the de decades following 
uh, his attack on his wife in an effort to find out what his first husband's money was buried dates to the early 1860s and led to the legends of Annie Bigsby, her treasure and her ghost. Her treasure has never been found and she survived running off a cliff in the dark. She is the namesake of the Annie Woman's Center in nearby Harrisburg, Illinois.